What's up, Drop Pod listeners? You can check out new episodes of the Drop Podcast every Wednesday, wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find all of our content on YouTube at the Drop Golf Podcast and on our socials. That's Instagram and Twitter at the Drop underscore pod. No matter how you consume us, like, subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. Follow and listen along. This episode is presented by All County Exteriors. Discover the excellence of All County Exteriors, a third generation leader in premier exterior home remodeling, proudly celebrating over 40 years of success. While most remodeling companies last just five years, All County Exteriors has withstood the test of time, consistently delivering top quality roofing, siding, windows, and doors. Their expertise extends from small repairs to large additions, serving homeowners and builders alike. More than just a construction company, All County Exteriors is deeply committed to community service, proudly supporting organizations such as the Make-A-Wish Foundation, the American Cancer Society, Roost for Troops, and Parents of Autistic Children. If you have planned to do any exterior modeling, call the experts at All County Exteriors for a free, no-obligation estimate for your project. Just call 732-370-2780 or email them at info at allcountyonline.com. That's 732 732- 370-2780 for all county exteriors for all your modeling needs. This is the Drop Podcast where we talk golfing in the Garden State. I'm Mike Poro and this is Ryan Kulat. What's up, Drop Pod people? How you doing this week? Uh, Mike and I have a big Masters recap episode for you. Uh, we're talking everything Masters this week. We got a couple updates and and some housekeeping stuff, but then we're going to jump into uh, into what was a, a great weekend. A lot of fun, a lot of fireworks there. So let's uh, let's jump into it, Mike. Today's guest. Another reason this episode is big. Today's guest is Dr. Mike Pomacala, Sports Solutions PT. Uh, yesterday was the finale of TPI Tuesday. Episode 18 came out on uh, April 16th, again, yesterday. So we had Dr. Mike on. Uh, we gave uh, our Mike a, a behind-the-scenes look. He got to see it first, uh, saw the finale. We talked about it and then interviewed Dr. Mike and and. Uh, and Mike grilled uh, both of us fairly extensively with some questions. And, and uh, so that's the, uh, that's the back half of the show. We got Dr. Mike on to kind of talk a little bit about his background, give more info on TPI and talk about the journey we've been on for the last four months. So, um, so make sure you stick around for that. It was a lot of, a lot of fun. It was a grill session Yeah, for, for everybody that's going to, you know, get to the interview eventually. It was a grill session and I put them, those two on blast I, I called them both out. I wanted Dr. Mike to tell me what Ryan needed to do to, to hold up his end of the bargain um, to maintain the numbers that he got. So, again, you got to stick stay tuned because Dr. Mike's not only a, a great person um, but a great physical therapist as well. For sure. And I'm going to say this here uh, in case we don't get to it again. Um, my I was going to kind of lay out because I knew that this was more of a Mike being the interviewer and Dr. Mike and I being the interviewees, the people getting interviewed. Um, but I'm, I'm rather quiet because I have some Internet problems early in the uh, in the interview. So I, if you're watching this, I kind of float in and out of the uh, of the picture and uh, if you're listening and you're wondering why I don't talk for the first maybe 10, 15 minutes, that's uh, that's why I was I was floating in and out of digital space. You teed me up for a nice joke there, but I'll spare you early on here today. Oh, so I let's keep appreciate going. that. That's thank thank you. It's very nice of you. Little schedule for this week: Monday, the fifteenth, Mike versus Bella Fista, par five, fifth hole came out. Uh, par if you didn't four, get a- fifth hole. Uh, yep, that's, that's correct. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to go check that out, um, it's on YouTube. It's on, uh, it's back in our, our stories. You can click on the, uh, on the Mike, what are those called underneath there? Our, highlights, little highlights, the highlights, little highlights. Little yep. highlights there. Mike's Mike's got it on there. Uh, yesterday, Tuesday, there was the finale of TPI Tuesday. For those of you that saw it already. Awesome. Those that haven't yet. Head over to YouTube, go check it out. Uh, Episode 18, TPI Tuesday, it is the finale. 
Today we got episode 80 coming at you, Wednesday, the 17th of April. Uh, check out the YouTube version. Head over to YouTube. You got the whole the whole video of Mike and I doing our recording over there. But episode 80, um, again, Mike, we talked about how crazy it is going by so fast. Tomorrow, Thursday, is going to be my second Ryan's verse of the year. Um, I was thinking about this, actually, Mike, kind of how I wanted to say it, because I had those couple that were in in you know january february march uh i i like that this is now the, the posting season so that's i'm going to say of the season so i kind of started anew last week with uh ryan verse true blue put that one out this week ryan verse tidewater uh hole 13 it's a par five there so that'll be coming out tomorrow um that's kind of a little little week in review recap preview that kind of thing and I think one more thing I got before you get into the the Masters and the recap, because I know that's going to be the bulk of this whole episode. Um, one, the winner of the giveaway. Um, you know, again, this this rangefinder case that Lopar Golf put together for us with our logo embroidered on there is is was really cool. It was really neat. Um, selfishly, you know, I would have loved to have kept it, put it on my bag, and used it. Um, but obviously, that it was sick. Good. Yeah, it's not the intent. A little camouflage, you know, gray corporate on there. And our winner, his name was Scott, and I'm I'm sure I'm gonna butcher this. Caliphus. Scott Caliphus. And it's funny it. because most people would have thought like someone in New Jersey won. But we are now broadening Let me our guess. horizons here. Pennsylvania. Thomasville, Georgia. So shout Whoa. out to Scott. Shout out to Scott for for listening, for following, for entering the giveaway. Because I know, unlike some other podcasts, that sometimes you hear all the giveaways are going out, and you never hear you ever hear who wins. Nothing ever gets promoted on this show. We give a have a giveaway. You get to find out who the winner is. So, congrats, Scott. That's in the mail. You should be receiving that shortly. Yeah, Scott. Thanks for following. Uh, it's it's crazy that someone from Georgia would really care what we have to talk about, but. Appreciate you following along there, Scott. Thank you. Are you looking for the perfect place to tee it up this season? Or just looking for a great spot for casual comfort food? Or how about the most picturesque backdrop for the wedding of your dreams? Then you need to go visit Galloping Hill Golf Course in Kenilworth, New Jersey. Conveniently located in Union County, right off exit 138 on the Garden State Parkway. Galloping Hill encompasses over more than 270 beautiful acres. It was again ranked in the top 10 of best public golf courses in New Jersey. Galloping Hill also offers a top 50 in the country learning center with 52 stalls and a 45,000 square foot practice area. In addition to a nine hole course that is ranked in the top 10 of short courses in the entire country, Galloping Hill is more than just golf. The Hill Tavern Bar and Grill is a gastro pub with seasonal food and beer options updated regularly with amazing views of the course. Hosting over 100 golf outings and over 400 social events per year, their catering team consistently wins awards each year from The Knot and The Wedding Wire. Schedule a tour for your special event at the clubhouse at gallopinghill.com. It's all happening this year at Galloping Hill Golf Course. All right, Mike, let's uh, let's get to the big elephant in the room here. Or should we say the tiger in the room? So, I'm no, Mike didn't like that joke very much. Am I supposed to start giggling there or what? Because for as <laughs> I, many negative things I thought it was a pretty you, good joke. <laughs> for as many negative things as you might want to say right now, I, I'm sure I got a lot of, a lot of counters to that. Uh, I don't, I don't know why you would have any counters to anything negative because uh, finishing DFL – not not the best result there. Well, he uh, did finish. He played 72 holes, which is probably the first did. time he's done that in a, in a very, very, very long time. So right, if you on that find slim the, gym of a leg he's got. If you got to find the positive sometimes, he also made the cut for the 24th consecutive time. Okay? Mm -hmm. another Another record that he can just put a notch in the belt. And I think what did him throughout the week is – he played those first 13 holes on Thursday very, very well. And he looked pretty, pretty good. And if you listen to the to the live featured broadcast, Dottie Pepper, a former guest of ours, made a comment that 
Friday morning, he woke up and she legitimately, if you heard her, could not get the right adjective out. She just frankly came out and said, he has not looked good all morning, Mm -hmm. which all of a sudden, right off the get-go is not a good sign. And she says this, that if anybody was watching Friday morning, he smokes the drive 315 yards right down the middle of the fairway on 14. Smokes it. Not it just pipes it. She gets on the mic as he's about to hit the second shot. And he may, she makes that comment, like just throwing it out there. So people understand how, what she saw, he goes on to chunk the second shot. He blades the third shot. And I think it was a matter of his will just to get through and make the cut to shoot even par 72 in that second round. Because I mean, not for nothing, Max Homa shot 71 that day. So even in the second round alone, he only lost to Max by one. And I think playing 23 holes just did him in for the entire week. The guy, frankly, was having a hard enough time playing 18 in a day to now playing one of the toughest golf courses to walk for 23 holes. I think that did him in. And listen, I think a lot of us were probably surprised he even showed up on Sunday to even play after seeing how bad he was on Saturday. But I think, again, that's just another testament to Tiger that, hey, listen, I'm not done yet. Yeah, that is not a testament to Tiger, that last part, Mike, because he was going to show up to to Sunday. The only way he wasn't is if his leg had actually fallen off and had left his body. That's the only way. But his his Sunday round was even worse than his Saturday round. So not score he was, was. He not was, score was. He was showing up regardless to that to that Sunday round. I, I will say he, I don't think I don't think he's in in shape enough. And I mean like his his body, his ligaments, his tendons, his joint. He he looks physically fit, but he's just not. I don't think that it was the twenty three holes on Friday. I just think he can't handle. 72 holes. Even if he had played 18 and 18, I don't think the weekend goes very well for him. I and think the biggest issue really wasn't though is his lower body. I think it's his back. I think his back is now the problem. I do. I, I, I tell you, the way he walked, it did not seem like the walking to me. If you watched him all, all week, he was doing weird stretches with his back, trying to loosen up his back. I don't think it's his leg. I don't think it's his ankle. I don't think it's that. I'm starting now to believe that now the the back is becoming another problem. And I guess I won't be surprised if if we have some final procedure on the back to say, hey, listen, now that my leg's all fixed, let's, let's fix the back again. Needs a backyotomy again. Yeah, I, uh, I actually, it's funny you say that because I was thinking the opposite of that. I know he was doing all the back stretching, but I think that the surgery that he had fusing his ankle together or whatever it is, just the uneven lies – it's so much on his on his joints that I I think that's what got him. Um, again, it's it's one or the other, and really it doesn't matter because it's 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 very clearly one of those two. Um, but yeah, he, he did he did not look good in the on the weekend, and I I think that his Sunday round. Uh, I liked his casualness in the Sunday round. There was just something in his, in his round, whenever they did show him it, and you saw pictures of him with, um, Oh, who's the amateur. I got him on our, on our list here near Shipley. Just to, just to, uh, we'll bring him up now. Like I love that. Like Neil Shipley got this like casual Sunday afternoon round with, with tiger. Like, I think that was so cool. This amateur just to tiger's not in contention. So he didn't look as, focus or as grinding as he would have had they both been right around even par and tigers trying to grind out you know to get to two under or something like that it was it was really cool to see i thought and it was it was a nice uh a really nice thing for for neil shipley and hopefully he gets uh you know i don't know if he's going to be a pro or whatever his whatever his deal is but that was really a cool cool moment for him to be able to Again, just how many casual rounds of golf does Tiger have? Do you think how many times is he playing? Just like a oh, hey, casual, go, casual, yeah, just like I a casual. More than you think, because he can hop in a cart, fly around with his son, and be done in two and a half hours. And 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 you know what? If it is more than I think, then I, I still think it's it's less than the normal person, right? I, I think he's because uh, even with when he's with Charlie, I think they're playing for. You know, Charlie's trying to beat him. Tiger's kind of make sure Charlie doesn't beat him. Uh, I I think they're working on things out there Uh, as far as just like, hey, let's not keep score today. Let's just go hit the ball. I I think that that's 
but that's kind of what Sunday felt like for me with Tiger and seeing him. And I, and I think that was really cool for Neil Shipley to kind of, to kind of be on the other end of that and get the, get the other side. Cause I don't think that there's many of those rounds out there. I think that's a very yeah, valuable no doubt, thing. That, an unbelievable experience. And I do also got to put this out there that I know when I went live on Instagram with Chris Dimick, I had a nice wager that, I'd get three polos out of his shop if Tiger finished better than Phil. And and I knew and I had a gut feeling that if Tiger made the cut and Phil didn't, it was a lot. I won. But Phil making the cut, Tiger making the cut just did not bode well for me. So I did have to say and announce that I did lose that bet that I do owe Chris Demick three drop podcast polos. I don't like admitting that. Um, but I will fight with Mr. Eldrick Woods to the day I die because I know I had some listeners even come up to me this week and say, you got to get off the tiger train. And I said, I, I'll never get off that train because that guy's going to do something eventually. And we're all going to say, there he is. But listen, he said he's gearing up. He's not done. He's not done. He's gearing up for Valhalla. The PGA's next. Then we're heading south to Pinehurst. And then we're off to the British Open. We got, we have once a month is happening now. So stay tuned. See, I, I actually think that that, that hurts. Uh, it hurts your case a little, Mike, because he didn't play in the players and you don't have a flatter course than, than the stadium course. I mean, it, it's a Florida course. There's no hills, there's no movement. That would have, him not playing in that, I think, is telling that that 12 uh, or once a month is is less likely to happen now. It's uh, happening now. He's playing in April. That's the Masters. He's playing in, in, once. in May. He's playing in May. That's the PGA. Once a month. He's playing in, in um, June in the at Pinehurst. Then he's playing in, in July Flat at course. Augusta. Yeah. So we, we're, the next four months, we're seeing the guy. Playing and July at Augusta? At, at uh, Sorry, at the British Open. So, yeah. so, so we're going to see him once a month. And listen. I know you guys all want to knock him. I know people DM me and say, get off it, get off it. People text me. People tell me in person. But I will counter with this and say, for as many people as say that tell me that get off the Tiger train, do you know who did not make the cut at, at Augusta? Oh, Wyndham Clark, one of the best players coming into the week. Jordan Spieth, everybody talks about, oh, Jordan – didn't make the, Ricky Fowler, your boy Ricky, doesn't make the cut. Justin Thomas. We get a lot uh, Ricky of Ricky did make the cut. I apologize. I meant Justin Thomas. You're right. Ricky did make the cut <laughs> on the number, whatever the case is. But nonetheless, I will say this. T30. Guys, guys that are big name people, Tiger doesn't ever play golf anymore, and he still finds a way to make the cut. For us to overlook that accomplishment, it's I is it's, crazy. It's not it's it's crazy because it's it's you're you're bringing Tiger down a, a a notch. Like Tiger making the cut for Tiger standards is not is not the standard for Tiger. But when we look at it in the grand scheme of things, yes, making the cut is great, a, a huge accomplishment. But that's not what we expect out of Tiger. And at some point, Tiger's not going to have that moment anymore. There's going to be no more of those moments left. Maybe he's going to have one more. But then after that happens, at some point, there's going to be no more moments left. So did he already have the moment in 2019 where he could hug no. his kids? No. Okay. So at some point, when are you going to admit that that is the last moment? I will let you know. Okay. Six, when Tiger turns 62 and a half and is eligible for AARP, is that it? <laughs> I will let you know. I, uh, uh yeah, it's it's a tough one to let go. I, I really do. But like in the same way, like I, like I'm still old enough to remember Jordan putting the sneakers on for the Wizards, and that was that was a, a not the best, uh, not the best time of his life. And I don't know. It, it's uh, I've I've said it before. I would like Tiger to get back. I would like him to be at the very least in contention. I don't like seeing Tiger like this because he he looks awful. But I think the reality is is that he needs to get uh, whether he's physically not going to get right. We talked about it with Doctor Mike, right? With my shoulder, right? I can never go past that ninety just because I have that restrictions. Whether that's Tiger's new thing and he's got to work through that, or whether that's just his new normal, or whether that's that he's he's going to be unable to do things, or he's going to get tired after seventy two. You know, I don't know, but I would love to see him get back. 
but I don't think that's going to happen. My last comment on Tiger is this. Listen, sure. his ball speed is there. The driving distance is there. His hands are there. If we can just get this body for four days just to come along for the ride, I'm telling you, he's not done yet. But, done. like, why didn't he play in the players? It's flat. He wasn't ready yet. He wasn't ready yet. He wasn't ready. He's right. ready now. He's ready now. All right. I yeah, agree. I that is all there. It, it, it is. He's, he's got the hands. He's got the ball speed. He's got, but putting it together for 72 holes in four days is a lot of, a lot of work. Golf is hard and physically demanding. Are you fed up with the appearance of your rangefinder case hanging on your bag? Or perhaps you've ditched the case altogether and now you're fumbling through your bag to find it. Luckily, if that's you, we have the perfect solution. Introducing Lopar Golf, a brand that specializes in premium rangefinder cases. With Lopar Golf's premium rangefinder cases, those days are over. These sleek and stylish cases are designed to keep your rangefinder easily accessible and protect it right at your fingertips. Crafted with the highest quality materials, their cases offer a snug fit for your rangefinder, ensuring maximum protection against bumps and scratches. The interior features soft padding to cradle your rangefinder while the durable exterior keeps it safe from the elements. And here's the best part. These cases are not just practical. They're also fashion forward. Available in a range of stylish colors and designs, you can showcase your personal style on the golf course. So whether you're a scratch golfer or just enjoy a round with the boys, Lopar Golf's premium rangefinder cases are a must-have accessory to elevate your game. Don't settle for anything less than the best. Visit their website at lopargolf.com and browse their collection of premium rangefinder cases today. Lopar Golf, a case that merits a place on your bag. Uh, I do want to go over a couple of things here, Mike, with, uh, with, with this. You already talked about your bet. Uh, you had Tiger as your dark horse, I believe. DFL. You had Hideki winning it. T38. Uh, and kind of a backdoor T38. Didn't have a, have a big day on Sunday. He was kind of not really in contention at, at any point there. Uh, your lock for a top 10 was DJ. Did not make the cut. Uh, Real quick, you were breaking up on me. I didn't hear any of that, so I really don't know what you said. Um, uh, I, I, I go, don't. I, DJ, I don't even, I, I'm just kidding. I heard everything of that, oh. so I just trying to. <laughs> I don't want to hear it, but I heard it. And yes, frankly, you can give it to you. the picks were awful. No, no other way to describe it. Um, I apologize if anybody backed me on these. Um, but listen, I felt confident, and and it just some days you have it, and some days you don't. Yeah, I, uh, I we went two different directions. I did the six pick six from the tier category, so I just kind of wanted to go over our picks and give everyone our finish, just to make sure they they knew it. Not uh, not that you had a, a missed cut and a, and a DFL, but uh, I picked Scotty in tier one. Um, you might have heard he won the tournament. I picked Maddie Fitz in tier two. He finished T twenty two. I had Shane Lowry. He finished T43. All my guys made the cut, by the way. Uh, Ricky Fowler, T30. Keegan Bradley, T22. And Lucas Glover with the highest finish, T20. So uh, so I don't know what that equates to in one of those pools, but I, I felt I was really happy that, I, that everybody made the cut. I didn't expect that. So um, if anyone did jump on that, you know, hopefully you did well. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um we should, maybe we should have started with this mike uh i want to give a shout out to Stu hagestad Stu competing uh he didn't make the cut but uh, i mean he, he went after it played some really good golf uh it, it kind of leads me into a, a thing i want to talk about because Stu is an amateur but he is a a stud amateur right he's a unbelievable golfer arguably the best ever right and he's in the realms with like bobby jones right 
So I wanted to ask you those, like you hear those Augusta questions, right? Like what would a, what would a scratch golfer shoot from the tournament at Augusta? Um, you know, what would you shoot if you played there? Uh, I, I want to know, could you, the one that I liked was if you could put the ball on the green as far away from the pin as possible in Sunday pin placements, could you win the tournament? So referencing that if I'm on a green and one and a par three, I'm on the green and one and a par five. No, 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 no. You just, you're not, you haven't had a stroke yet. So my first, yeah. So basically I'm putting one on a par three. Yeah. And then I'm putting one on a par four and par five. Yep. Am I winning the tournament minus 11? I have 72 holes or I have 18 holes. Uh, oh, Sunday pin, Sunday pin. So I get Sunday one chance. So, yeah. No, so I get, no, absolutely not. Nope. Right. No shot. No shot. <laughs> As my, and I'm a terrible putter, so I'm really not the right person to ask. You'd have to find someone that's a good putter. Um, I'm not the right person for that because I, I probably just think, have five and six putts. But that that's a – Oh, absolutely. I think have, even a good putter is going to have five or six putts. You, I mean, you have to be 11 under. And if you're telling me I got to be the furthest away on some of those holes – I mean, they were talking like right, think about putters. think about two. Think about hole two where it's where it's far right. You're going to be way far left. That's a hundred and fifty foot butt. Yeah, and you're talking. Those guys were even mentioning on the broadcast that you have three footers and you're aiming a foot two feet outside the hole for a breaking putt on a right. short distance like that when you're used to kind of yamming it back in the back. So, no, I would say no. The answer is no to that, but. I mean, I guess if that's the way I have to get on Augusta as a putting challenge, and so be it. I'm more than happy to be that volunteer to to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to. I I just don't think uh, I don't think it's it's possible for just a regular a regular person. I mean, maybe you got to go as good as scratch. You know, someone who's a scratch golfer is is going to be. I just think it's there's so many holes where it's so far away. Again, even 18, you're going to be on the way top on 18 because it's front left. That traditional Sunday pin on 18, you're going to have a, a 75 foot putt that's downhill the whole time with a big slope on. You're not able to get that ball to stop. No, I mean, I, it's, I, it's going to stop in the bunker is where it's going to stop in. Listen, if that gets me on Augusta, I'll take the challenge. I'll be, you know, <laughs> call up Chairman Ridley. I'll be, I'll be that guy. I'll be the volunteer. You know. Okay. Uh, another one I, I saw, uh, if the, if you were to pick one hole to par to save your life, what hole are you picking? At Augusta? At Augusta. I've kind of already thought my answers out, so I'll give you a second to think. I, I thought this: if you if it's from the tournament tees, which you got to kind of figure that's what the question's asking. I think it has to be a par five or a par three, because a par five, I can still go driver three wood three wood, and at least get up near the green and maybe try to get up and down right, or maybe I'm driver three wood six iron and I'm able to get on a green maybe right at least I have that extra shot if it's a par three the way I was thinking is some of those par threes are like 240 yards and that's going to be driver for me so (laughs) I'm still within a range where I could at least possibly get it I don't think any of the par fours I can reach into from from the tournament tees I just I don't I don't think there's any that are well enough like open where I might be able to roll up something. Um, and I just, I think all of them are too long or don't fit my shot shape or whatever. So I, I was thinking about it. Maybe three was the, was the only one that I thought of, but here's the other thing. Then I don't spin it well enough to get it anywhere close to that pin. So now I have a brutal, putt and I'm forced to two putt on something. So that was kind of my thinking. I don't really have one. Uh, if you had, again, maybe it's 12 just because of the length of it. Um, you know, I, 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 maybe no I get lucky on, on like a day that's not as windy. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying after, as I thought about it for me, I would take on the par five 13th 
hole because I think my hook around that corner would I'd be able to benefit off that because you got to bend one good around the, the curt bound around the turn there. I can turn the ball over right can, to you, left. Right, Mike, you can't get to the turn with your drive. Yeah, but 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 I'm saying is like I'm saying to get it out there. Right, you're getting it into the fairway, and I then can, you're and then you're gonna play, lay up. I gotta hit a hook around the bend at some point. Yeah, I can hit that. Or mm-hmm. my other guess was like, if you gave me Sunday pins on 16, I can draw the ball in there. The ball obviously spins left off a draw, and on 16, if that pin is on that lower shelf where it normally is on Sunday. Yeah. I can play the middle green and maybe spin it off the shelf to give myself a par. Those are the only two holes that I think I could maybe par. But yeah. even then, I'd probably be nervous as hell, chunk it, drop it in the water on 16, and and my life is over. So Right. But again, Dude, I, I'll, I'll be the volunteer there if you need me to do this. 100%, yeah. I, I thought about, like, when I was thinking about it on par fours, it's like, okay, the 14th hole, the only hole that has no bunkers got no water in front you can you can run it up there if you wanted to right could i go like driver and then something long enough and i I, but i think it plays like 470 and i just i don't i don't think i'm i don't think i'm getting there and then i'm put in like an awkward spot i don't know it's a tough question it's an interesting question um the, kind of the more I thought about it, the more I was like, 12 is intriguing. If I could get away with a with no wind, I think that's the one that's at least the most easily reachable, right? It plays 160 yards or something like that. Um, maybe get up and down if I get it in the sand. Just try to get you know get, make sure you're over the water. But that's playing it in a vacuum. So I, I don't know. I'd be interested to see what other people hear or, or think about that because I thought that was a super interesting question. Uh, again, you go like 18, no, 17, no, because that pin placement is going to be brutal uh, and it's going to be long. 16, again, I, I think par threes are in play and par fives are in play for me. So staying with the Masters, is Rory ever going to win one? Yeah. Do you going to win a Masters? Yeah. He's too good not to. He's too good not to. He's gonna. He's got probably ten good years left. You gotta think he wins one out of ten. Right? How old is he? Is he 33, 34, 34, I think he is thirty four. Okay. Like you said, he's got ten good years left. Yeah, he's thirty four. I'd even I'd happen. even argue he's probably got eight good years left. Twelve years of being competitive. Um. I think Phil won the PGA at fifty. Yeah. You just gotta get you got. Rory right now, unfortunately, he's just like all, all us golfers realize. You just get in your head and it's game over. And I think he's got that pressure, especially when it comes to Augusta, that he's got to mm-hmm. get it to complete the cycle and to complete the Grand Slam. And it's it's it just weighs on him. That you know? added and, and, pressure is... And he hasn't been playing well. He hasn't no. been playing well. So, And you got somebody else on the other side with Scotty who just is so damn dominant that you just... I don't know when he's going to ever lose. And the only thing way he loses is when his wife has the baby, baby and that's that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, he uh I I think Rory will win it as well. I don't think uh I think it's going to come at a point when he finally gives up all hope, quite frankly, and is and lets go of all the pressure because I don't think he whether he admits it to himself or not, I think that grand slam and going into that that stratosphere of Rory's a hall of famer already going into that stratosphere. Now you're talking about the greats. Now you're talking about the, the top 1% of the people already in the hall of fame that are, that have the grand slam or whatever the case, whatever the percentage is, or you're talking about the Mount Rushmore of people that have the grand slam. I think once he fully gets rid of that weight of like, it's not going to happen or or uh, lets himself get rid of that pressure and kind of let it wash away, will he be able to freely play Augusta? Because he does always look like he's nervous out there or like he's got this enormous pressure, which he does, and he can't seem to to let it go. And it's it's once he once he does, and I know that's easier said than done, but once he does, I think I think that's when it gets done. Yeah, and to your point, I think it gets done. It's just a matter of when, really. Um, 
You know, because he's just too good not to. But to answer your question, yes, Rory McIlroy will eventually win the Masters tournament. One thing we got to talk about, Mike. We got to talk about Jason Day's outfit. Yeah, that was mind-boggling. Bro, (laughs) what was that? Uh, Listen, I get it that, like, in the world we are in today where everything is – they're trying to make golf cool. You got the music, you got untucked shirts, you got the joggers, you got all this stuff. You got new brands coming in the mix. Totally get all that, and, and I'm cool with the evolution of the game. But I don't know what the hell he was wearing. And I get it, Melbourne is like the new thing. The pants are just insanely baggy. I just, I, I'm not into that style whatsoever. You couldn't <laughs> probably, pay, I guess maybe you could pay me to wear it like you are him, but it's just weird. And I, when I saw the article that an Augusta National, more or less, they said a green jacket had asked him to take it off because it was too. A green cool. coat, they called it. Yeah, them. green coat. Yeah. <laughs> asked him to take it off. Like, I could see why. I mean, that thing was screaming. It was heinous. He looked like a was, cigarette box. It was like <laughs> screaming Malbon. And I'm like, yeah. God, this is just a bad, bad look. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes he and Jason Day said it like they send me the clothes. They say, I want you to wear this on Thursday. I want you to wear this on Friday. That's what the sponsor wants. That's what you do. Yeah. And so we did it. But, man, oh, man, that that look is just not my cup of tea. Maybe it's some others. But like the baggy, the the, I'm, it's not me. It's not my style. I didn't like it. I and I don't know. I just was not into that at all. Not even a little bit. It was it was tough to tough to look at, quite frankly. And I'm glad that someone told me to took it off because it was it was offensive, not just to the golf course or golf, but to to my eyes as well. <laughs> what do you think Scotty's legacy is now? Two time Masters winner. Is he old enough to start? Is he old enough to start? Uh, <clears throat> ooh, little, little screech there. Is he old enough to start um, building that? Like, what is his with this run he's on? Is he going to be? Is this going to be propelled for the next five, six, seven, eight, ten years? Well, listen, he's he's won two majors now, and I think the real question, he's, and obviously he's won back to back players. Like, but but I think like anything, you measure people's career on majors, and it's unfortunate, but I think that's what we're we're in. You know, Brooks has five majors. You know, like, are you thinking that he gets past Brooks at five? Does he get to seven? You know, I, you just watch him right now, and you got to say he's doing Tiger like things. And who's going to ultimately stop him? But we also know that there's only four a year. He's not going to win every one. Sometimes he'll end up on the bad side of the draw. Sometimes that putter will go cold. I got to think that, like, when you look at Scotty, he's only 27. I. But you have to also understand that life comes in the way of things. It's not always going to be this easy at times for him. I'm going to say that when it's all said and done, Scotty Scheffler will end up with a Hall of Fame career of six major championships. He'll get like four more. He'll get four more. I think his game fits Augusta very, very well. I got to think that when you're thinking about the PGA, like it's always a rando that's involved in the PGA. I do. It's never like, you know, maybe, okay, Brooks is the exception because that seems to be like his thing. But like Edmito Pereira leading at one time, Justin Thomas seems to win those. Colin Morikawa seems to win those. Like, I just don't know if Scotty, I don't know. I don't, I guess my number was six and that's kind of where I'm sticking with it. I just don't know if he has Double digits seems like a lot of majors, man. Double digits seems like a lot in this day and age when there's so much parody in golf. I know. There's so many toss, guys that it's like this guy can win. Tiger this guy for can one win. more too. Right. You you need to think of Tiger for one more. But you also have, I mean, you got guys that that are perennially good that are that should be up there and are constantly uh, again, you rolled off some. You got Rory, JT. Uh, Scotty, Rom, uh, Ricky, Rom, Kepka, um, Wyndham Clark now putting it. Yeah, I mean, you just have Ludwig. these guys you who throw are. Ludwig look, in there and, now. And, and I, oh, dude, I was just going to get into him. I was like, you have all of these guys, and then you have guys that are up and coming. And I think what. what Ryan Tiger, Harmon's of the world. <laughs> right. Then you got in the rando that's occasionally going to win something, right? So they're professional golfers. They all have the capability of doing it. It's whether they can put it together for 72. And then you have these, these new guys. I just think that the thing that tiger had going for him was 
he did so many things so dominantly, so quickly that people became scared of him. And then that was part of the aura. And I'm not saying that he's not good enough to, to have won all of his or whatever it was, but he, he won some of them by chasing people down because they were like, Oh shit, tigers, tigers in the rear. And, and that is how he won some of them. I don't think any of these guys are going to, are going to, these guys grow up with each other. They grow up playing in tournaments. They're not going to, they're not going to get an Oh shit major. The fear, just, factor, once, the fear factor doesn't exist for Scotty Scheffler. Like it, it doesn't. For Tiger. It doesn't. And, and I don't know if it ever will again because Tiger did it so dominantly. It's like, oh, okay, we've seen that. That's never happening again. So we can just, we can just not be scared of people anymore. So I, I don't know what it is, but you have – I think it's a mixture of that. I think there's so much good golf and, and better golf now. Whereas back then, like, yeah, Tiger had to compete against – and I'm not trying to knock this on Tiger, but this is the Tiger hater uh, – argument is that okay he had to play david duvall early in his career phil uh ernie ernie right you could you could name guys hall of fame guys but the pool of guys is of talent is not as large as it is now and and i think that's true because not all of the guys were doing you know, working out the same way or doing it. Now they're all doing the same stuff. They can all bomb it. They all hit it. There's just, it's a bigger pool of people um, that are, that are doing it. And yeah, I, I think Scotty's going to have a, a, a tremendous career, but to say double digits, I, I don't know. I don't know if we ever see that again. I don't double digits is a dominant, a, a dominant career, uh, especially considering the amount of time you have to do it. You know, call it twenty-two to forty-two. So you're going to win. You're going to win a quarter of your of your ma- of your majors. I don't I mean, know. Listen, seems if like, he got, seems to, like if he got, lot. I mean, and I think let's put this in perspective. I don't know if I that said, math, math actually. I'm I said that, but... six. I say six. Phil Mickelson has six. I mean, so you're talking about a, a cr- the only there's only three people that have double digits. You're talking Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods, and Walter Hagen. Like oh, before we start saying like, oh, double digits is in the realm. Like Gary Player never got the double digits. Mm-hmm. Tom Watson never got the double digits. Ben Hogan never got the double. So right. so we're going on a list of guys. So when we say six, like okay, I I think that's a reasonable and fair number for someone like Scotty Scheffler, who's going to continue for the next probably twenty years to have a chance to win them. You just can't think that he can do what he did every single week. And listen, maybe I'm wrong because going into the PGA, he's clear as hell going to be the odds on favorite yet again. The odds are going to be even better in his favor that he does it better than the 450 that they were right now. They're probably going to be plus 300. So is he going to play in it? The PGA? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. It's next month and his wife's going to be giving birth. He's going to have a a one month old. Yeah. He'll play in it. I got. I, I would, got some, I would think I, so, but I'll I'll text him on the side and let you know what he says. But okay. he's a New Jersey guy. He's he is a New Jersey, Jersey guy. guy. <laughs> so I, I'll send him a little, you know, just to confirm. <laughs> uh, Mike, before we sign off here, I want to uh, wish you luck uh, as this is coming out on Wednesday, the seventeenth. Mike and his partner. Um, am I allowed to say his name? Yeah, he already broke that <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> I know uh, Mike and Austin are qualifying or trying to qualify in the NJ four ball. Um, so I wanted to wish you guys luck. Uh, you guys can go follow, head over to the uh, NJ SGA probably on Instagram. They probably have the, the golf genius app up there. You can follow along with our guys. Uh, but I wanted to give you a, a, a shout out. Wish you luck. Um, play well, let it rip, bud. Do our best. That's all you can ask yeah. for. Uh, Austin, I hope you're. Uh, I hope you're been lifting. You're going to have to carry Mike for a lot of those holes. So make sure you're make sure you're feeling tip top shape. You got anything else, Mike? Nope, all good, pal. All right, let's uh, let's sign off here. We're going to send you to our interview with Dr. Mike Pamakala, Sports Solutions PT. Again, Dr. Mike's been my guy. I've uh, been going to him all winter. He's been a TPI Tuesday instructor for for 18 episodes you saw his finale yesterday we have him on to talk about the journey and and talk about things um he's the sponsor of my ryan's verses for this year he's he's a a phenomenal phenomenal individual um i i I said in the finale yesterday i cannot 
Uh, I cannot endorse this guy more. He is such a uh, such an incredible physical therapist, such an incredible human being. Um, he, he's awesome. If you have any need whatsoever, make sure you go see him. Check him out, Sports Solutions PT uh, on Instagram. That's his website as well. Go check him out. Um, here's our interview with Dr. Mike. Enjoy. George Wall Ford in Red Bank, New Jersey is family owned and operated proudly serving New Jersey residents with superior customer service since 1960. Rye, share your story about your experience there. Mike, I, I went on a tangent in one of our episodes previously about it, but I can't say enough good things about George Wall Ford. Um, I needed a new car. I had, I had an old, uh, I loved the brand that I had. I loved, you know, it was an SUV, but had 165,000 miles on it. It was just time, you know? So I hopped on over to George Wall Ford. I saw our guy, Jerry, um, and Jerry and his team were awesome. I mean, from, from stem to stern, they're there, they're helping, they're knowledgeable. Um, they have so many cars on the lot that you can go in and say, Hey, I want a sunroof a navigation. I want this kind of rims on it. I want this kind of this, that, and the other thing. There's there's a great chance that they have that car with all your specs, the color, all that thing. Me, I didn't particularly care. I just I I was like, hey, I I want to be high up on in the car, right? I want I want I need an SUV. I'm a big guy. I got a dog. I got golf clubs. I got beach chairs in the summer. I need something that's a little more rugged, a little more. Um, again, I like to be higher in my car. And I went and saw Jerry. He pointed me in the right direction. And and again, it's it's awesome to have that kind of help and support from your salesman to the finance guy to to even the, they got somebody who helps you set up your car right i got an app on my phone now that's got my auto start on it i can locate my car if i don't know where it is uh i could take a trip to to japan if i wanted to and be like did i lock my car and i can go into the app and lock my car so um the, even even you know, people helping you set up that stuff. It just the hands-on approach over there is is incredible. So if you need a car, head on over to George Wall. Uh, they and go ask for Jerry. They were awesome there. Again, stem to stern from everybody. I can't say enough good things about it. It was an unbelievable experience. So to Ryan's point, there isn't a better place to shop for a brand new car. Just call seven three two seven zero four one nine three two and ask for Jeremy Wall. George Wall Ford and Red Bank for all your car buying needs. All right. So today this is like a, a gem for me to dive deep in with Dr. Mike about Ryan and his, I, I just, his journey. I think that's the easiest way to describe this thing for the past four months Seeing these things, watching these things. I mean, after episode 17 and him giving the karate kick, I thought he was down for the count. And all of a sudden, he's back and better than ever. Dr. Mike, thanks That's, for coming on today's show, man. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys. Listen, in all sincerity, like to be in this metaphorical seat where you've had Jim Nance and all these amazing pros and amateurs and <laughs> golf instructors, it's, it's really cool to be here with both of you. So thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. So listen, before we dive into this journey, why don't you give the audience a little bit about you? Dr. Sure. Mike sports solutions, PT, they've heard the advertisements. They've heard the reads. They've seen the videos on YouTube. Tell the audience for the people that may not follow on Instagram or they don't know who you are and what you do. Why don't you a little, share a little bit about about you and your background? Sure. So um, I'm a doctor of physical therapy. Um, board certified in both orthopedics and sports, uh, certified strength and conditioning specialist, TPI medical three, fitness and golf level two. Um, now that we got the boring stuff out of the way, <laughs> when, it, when it comes down to it, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I love the game of golf. And so it's cool that I can combine my passion of golf uh, and the physical aspect. And we'll dive into that later. Um, and how, you know, golf is such a physical game and it takes a toll on the body. And how can I help, you know, just anybody maintain their uh, vehicle for this game? And so I've been practicing 10, 11 years now, and it's just something that I love to do. Listen, I, it, 
from an outsider's perspective, I am these types of numbers and the analytics. Sure. I'm a big nerd. I am, yeah. and I admit it. I admit it. I love I admit that. It. But this is something that I think is really cool because anytime that you can find data about yourself or ways to improve about yourself, I say it all the time, we're always all in on that. When it comes to somebody else, it may not be our number one priority, but like when it's about us, it's very interesting. And to kind of see like Ryan's journey, and I and I think it's it's very interesting because as the audience probably have seen, the, the last episode aired and all the numbers were given. And I think that's always a curiosity, kind of like where you were to where you are. Yeah. Talk a little bit about Ryan's journey throughout this process. Like when he started with you four months ago, like did you sure. think that he could get to the numbers he ended up getting to? Or did you think that, you know, where he got was like, wow, okay, we far exceeded expectations. Uh, a little bit of both, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah, no, I want you yeah. to. I, so, because I'm, not, I'm about yeah. to dive deep if you're not being honest. Yeah, no, no, 100%. So uh, we look at two things, right? Um, one, I've seen him do it last year. So I know he has the physical capacity to do it, right? Um, I always say for a bigger guy, he is like, and I don't mean this in the in a rude way at all, right? But like <laughs> that Chris Farley, where you would never expect he could just get on the floor and like, you know, do a windmill and a split. And you're like, what? Where, where's, where's this guy coming from? You know what I mean? At the baseline level, Ryan is a true athlete. And you can tell. You're the being part, kind. Yeah, the part where I hesitate is because one of the biggest things I want my clients to get out of our sessions is, how can I educate you so you don't need me all the time, if that makes sense? Yeah. So it's what are you doing on your own? Are you doing, you know, your TPI program? Are you taking the time to, you know, not sit down for eight hours a day and then stand up and then go right to the course and just play? Because, you know, that's not what our bodies are meant to do, really. So it was, Brian, can you be consistent with these things? Are you doing them? And he'd be honest with me, like, Dr. Mike, guy didn't do anything this week. I'm like, all right, well, let's see where you are. Let's retest some things, see where you're at what's bothering you and we'll tailor what we need to do today for how you're feeling. So there's always our short-term goals that we, you know, try and eye week to week, um, but always trying to build towards those long-term goals. So I knew Ryan could get there, but I just depended on how, how dedicated he was. So within like, uh, yeah, it says your browser's re preventing recording. Mine says it's recording. Mine says it's recording. It sounds like it's a you problem, but you may need to stop the recording and let us continue the recording. Okay. So Dr. Mike, like obviously as we see the progression Ryan's made, I knowing he is a bigger dude. I think that looks at people, people look at that and say that might cause some serious limitations, but to your point, him being athletic, I know him and I joke around a lot about this. You know, he's got soft feet and soft hands and he's able to do a lot of things. What is something that he's going to have to do to maintain these numbers? Because obviously he started at his numbers where they were. He finished, I want to say the number was 13, if I remember correctly. How does he maintain 13 without going from 13, now dipping all the way back up to 20, 25, and then having to get himself back down to where he was? How can he take 13 and maybe make it 10, maybe yeah. make it single digits? That's a great question. Um, again, it's multifactorial because like Ryan and I discussed, he's got some previous health injuries that mechanically from a tissue based level, he might not be able to ever overcome. So he was saying like he dislocated that shoulder in high school. Uh, it's to a point where no matter how we mobilize it, what we do to it, he might never get past that, that 90, 90 posture because his body won't physically let him. So the rest of his life, he might fail that test. So basically, we don't look at it as like, you know, if we get you to a plus seven, the best score, everything's perfect, awesome. You might be a phenomenal athlete, but you still don't know how to play golf, if that makes sense. Yeah, 100%. So the numbers are great because it paints an overall picture of where Ryan's at and what he can do. But again, like you said, my goal for him is to know where his hotspots are how we might have to adjust his swing characteristics just a little bit, because that doesn't mean he can't play golf. Obviously the guy can play golf, but 
as far as the actual testing goes, he might never potentially be able to get to that. Um, uh, similar with John Rahm and his, and his foot, that you know that he was born with sort of that clubbed foot, he might never pass certain tests, you know, the ankle dorsiflexion test, because his body just doesn't have the capability to ever do it. So, um, going back to what you said, we look at the numbers in a very unique way. No one ever has to be perfect. It just gives a, a, a insight into what his body can or can't do, essentially. Yeah, I mean, and I and I get that point. Like yeah. the perfect is really just perfect. It's it's not a fair perspective. Like right. it's really how can I be better? Because that's mm-hmm. ultimately the goal. Yeah. Because I and I think that's what I was saying. Like knowing he ended up at thirteen, the next time that he comes and tests with you, or he does his pre-test, or he gets mm-hmm. started, wants to get started again. I think from your perspective, the last thing you'd want to see from a client or a patient is to see the numbers constantly going up because then it's like, well, if I'm not there, you're not doing the work and I'm not, you know, someone that's your shadow. It's on you to maintain. So like, what's, what are things that you have given to Ryan that he has to work on behind the scenes so that when he does come back to you, it's like, all right, I can tell Ryan you're serious about this. You're putting in the work and I can see that you're maintaining these let's, improve and try to get better from there? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So um, this is kind of what we call our hotspots. So for Ryan, we know like his left calf, uh, right hip and mid back. So your thoracic spine and rib cage. Those are real quick, real quick before you. So, so in that little, so as thinking from the golf swing perspective, because you just named three spots to me, like knowing your left calf, you're kind of driving through, you're got your hips and you're trying to force mm-hmm. that motion coming yeah. through. Yeah. Like, is, is that possibly part of the reason why like distance may be something that he lacks in a sense, because when you're not driving down on your left side, mm-hmm. your hips aren't flying through. Yeah. Like, is that causing for someone like him, who is a bigger guy that you yeah. be able to smash the ball? Is that possibly some reasons why he loses distance? A thousand percent. And your lead leg has to be able to basically develop twice as much power as your rear leg because the rear leg is pushing in a way where it's driving you forward and back. So that leg, left leg, has to almost work twice as hard to get your left hip, your left front side out of the way. So that's to your point. So sometimes what we'll do is have the client cheat a little bit. So maybe we might open his stance a little bit to let his lead hip sort of start with the head start in the race, if that makes sense. And, and what we did for Ryan too, was um, kind of trail uh, open his trail leg a little bit, because that's going to give his lead leg a little bit more time to sort of get out of the way as he, as he comes through uh, his follow through. Yeah, that may, that makes sense. And and you were describing things for me. I'm thinking about the golf swing that literally pertains exactly to that point. And, and I know, obviously, you're mentioning earlier about like John Rahm and some of the pros that that are, are focusing heavily in the TPI area. Mm-hmm. Like, give us a kind of perspective. I know that the comparison, you know, that's never a fair thing because, like they say, comparison's a thief of all joy, and it's not yeah. fair to say mm-hmm. let's compare Ryan to John Rahm. Right. But but I do know hold, the hold audience. On. Hold on, we can do that. I'll allow <laughs> it. Oh, listen, <laughs> we don't have enough time for that. We we would be here all day. Um, but I think. From a from a golfer's perspective, I think you're, it's always curious to see like what are those guys at like I because you, you see the yardage is like oh Rory carries it three fifteen well I yeah. can't do that but I like to see it yeah do you have an idea like what those professionals are in in the grading system of TPI and then oh. like kind of comparing it to Ryan or no and, and that's a great question I don't know if they actually have uh, their fitness handicap because th- here's the thing right like working, you know, with, uh, like Dr. Greg Rose and Dave Phillips at, uh, some of the, um, live sessions and all those things like that. They're, they're constantly doing so many things on so many levels where they have the, the 4d motion testing going on the force plates. And so they might run through their screen quick and just, okay, we know this is limited. This is limited. That's what we're going to focus on. And they don't really, you know, document it or do all those. So, you know, they know, you know, X person comes in and they can't get through. So they might do a couple of things. All right, let's look at the numbers. Okay, let's do it. Let's re- reassess it. And they're, you know, they just kind of know because they work with them so intricately. Same thing what Ryan and I would do over the course of four months. They'd be like, okay, you know, let me see your toe touch. All right, 
it's not there, but let's keep rolling. So you're kind of reassessing it. I, I doubt they ever do like a, all right, let's do our full test. You know, they might, but they might not document it at the same time. But I, I'd assume they were, you know, most of them are either single digits or close to, because again, the, the fitness health aspect of it, you guys seen in full swing, those guys are going hard before rounds, after rounds, off season. So, um, like we said, golf is a very physical sport and you have to take care of the vesicle that, that you play with, which is your body. So to yeah. Mike, to Mike's point, uh, every day he'd ask me like, Hey, like what's, how's it feeling? What's, what's hindering you? What's hampering you? What's the, every, every week we went in and that, then the table work that we would do early on in the, like the first thing we do always was geared towards whatever that was. So gotcha. exactly to Dr. Mike's point is like, he's, we've worked intricately enough now with each other that he knows, he knows my, you know, my hindrances, my, my body, my, you know, whatever you want to phrase it. Um, just like those pros do with their, with their TPI instructors or their physical therapists. So, and then, okay. So let's backtrack to day one when Ryan yeah. came to you before this series began. Sure. Do you recall what his number was the very first time you tested him? Yeah, I think it was like 33 or 34 or something like that. Holy This hell. is like going back Holy like hell. two years ago. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Holy yeah. hell, that's okay. Yeah. And to know that he's at 13 right now, mm -hmm. I believe that was a number, correct? Correct. So the progression's there. It's there. It's there. Rye, from your perspective, like, you know where you ended. You just put in four freaking months of going to Dr. Mike valuing your flexibility, your strength, and trying to find a way to take care of your body and know that it's posting season right now and it's golf season. You're carrying the bag. You're lugging the bag. You're walking more. You're frankly doing more. What, are, what is your goal when you go back to Dr. Mike maybe in two months, in three months, in four months, like, and he chests you? Like, are you going to be disappointed if that first number's a two? Like, what are some things that you're going to do? <clears throat> so I... Uh, with the TPI um, system or, or whatever you want to call it, the app has um, like there's exercises in the app that Dr. Mike has given me uh, that I can go in and I can and I can do. And, and at this point now, I kind of know the, the majority of it I can do off memory and I could just sit on my floor, roll around and do the exercises. Um Obviously, I don't want it to go high. Like, I want this to be the 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 watermark, I'd like to only go lower. But I don't know if that's realistic. And maybe maybe Dr. Mike can can say to that a little bit more. But to your point, I am doing more, and I am doing like I'm not going to be seeing Mike. We're not going to be doing the table work. That he's not going to be moving stuff, manipulating stuff that he that he's been doing once a week. So so it, I would assume it would go up. Um, I would assume that the carrying the bag, swinging more, um, do, you know, being more active in those ways is going to mo like manipulate my body into into ways that it's going to be out of you know quote unquote out of whack, and and maybe go back up. I wouldn't want it to go up into the thirties again, but I, I it's probably realistic to say that low twenties, mid twenties is probably a realistic number. <laughs> Is that Dr. Mike? Absolutely. You know, and going back to Ryan is not a professional golf golfer at the level of that's his full-time job. And so, you know, he might work a summer job here or there that requires different demands, different stresses on the body. Um, he might be, you know, driving here, there, everywhere. So he might be sitting more. Life gets in the way. If that, you know, it's the reality yeah, of it. And I so, totally get that. Yeah. You know, it's easy to work a summer job, get home and be like, you know, I'm exhausted. I don't want to do anything. So I'm just going to relax on the couch. And before you know it, you know, your, your body, your nervous system sort of feeds its old ways. The, the brain likes making the body comfortable, which is not always a good thing. And those numbers could slip a little bit. It, it's human nature. But the goal is for it to not. And I think right, part of that and, and part of that ends up being is like, it's lifestyle changes too. Yeah. It's like, all right, like I know sure. that I'm sitting down more. I know I'm being more active more. 
which is a good thing. Right. But that also means I need to do more of these stretches. And I may not only need to do them when I wake up, but I may need to do them mid-afternoon or before yeah. bed. So it does kind of put the onus on the client, or in this case, in, on Ryan to say, hey, listen, I don't want you coming back in what Ryan said in the third. Yeah. It's like, I, I, that's not, I'm not buying that. It's yeah. on you to find a way like, I know you're tired, but you got to get up and do it anyway. And yeah. I know you've had a long day, but I don't care. You got to get up. And so I think Absolutely. that for, forces the client to say from a, a, a personal perspective, it's I'm not your hand holder in life. If you want this and you want to be better, you've got to find time and make it a priority. Because if you come back to me and we're back in the thirties, we're not making progression. We're just going yeah. back to where we were. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> No, I'm knocking this bad boy out of the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 but, I, but I do think that to, to Ryan's point, because listen, he is a bigger dude. He knows yeah. that we talk about all the time. Yeah. And, and I think going to you for four months in my eyes shows like, okay, I'm, I value myself and, and I'm putting myself first and I need to, and I recognize there's some flaws and I'm going to find ways to improve that. And I love the fact that he, he's done this first yeah. of all, and the numbers have gotten better. It's, they haven't stayed steady or they're not flat they're 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 going in a positive direction and i think the challenge to him now is like all right i gotta maintain this i don't get there's no excuse here there's no excuse i'm gonna buy in all the into this so i gotta do it because for me i'm a ball buster i love to bust shops and the last thing i want to do is tell him like well we're back to the 30s and right back where you started from because (laughs) i you i do think he's he's a monster and i think he has a lot of ability and i've seen him hit the golf ball very far yeah and I do, I can tell from sometimes it's like, all right, well, he's, he's banged up a little bit. He's a little sore. And then are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? It's like, you, you know, the dad talking to the son, Hey, what, what's going on here, buddy? You that's know? the way it feels. That's the way it feels sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And I can listen and I can, and, and, and not and for nothing. It's good from, to have from the person. son's end too. It feels like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I listen enough. It's not a bad thing. I, I don't get, don't get me wrong. It's not a bad thing because sometimes you need that person to hold you accountable. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yep. But I also think like the onus also falls on the person too. Like, Agreed. do you want this? So when you test somebody, when you got that phone out and I see you holding it and you're looking at it and you're timing things, how do you make a point whether on this app to say like, okay, he's very good, he's average, he's below average? Because I saw the kind of the coloring, the red, the yellow, yep. the green, like from your perspective as like the sure. quote, the grader or the teacher. Yeah. What what defines good, bad, or or indifferent? Yeah, that's that's a great question. That's a loaded question. Um, obviously, the green means past flying colors. Yellow means not bad, but there's room for work. And red means there's potential for injury um, causing swing characteristics. Right, that's wow. something we really want to change if we can. Um, and so basically, what I'm looking at it is. Again, the physical screen is part of it. So I'm also looking at, um, you know, what uh, what are your clubs like? How do your clubs fit? Have you ever had a club fitting? And um, do you have you ever had any lessons? Do you know what a swing plane is? Do you know what how to actually swing a golf club and sequence a swing? And you know, we go through all swing different styles. There's there's tons of swing styles you see from like Jim Furyk to Rory to you know, dust in, but the Scotty slipping the Scotties. Right. But the thing about the pros is they all sequence their deceleration the same. It's all from the pelvis to the trunk, to the arm, to the wrist. So I look at one, can your body get your club on plane? And a lot, I believe it or not, has to do with like your hands, your, how you hold the club, your wrist, your shoulders and, and your hips, like your trunk. So those are the big ones. And then we just look at, again, do you have a history of ankle surgery? Do you have a spinal fusion? Have you had a labrum repair in your, in your shoulder or your hip? So from a point that, okay, like we have a red maybe on your 90, 90 hip, on your hip turn, you know, you've had surgery there. Are you going to get it? You know, when's the last time your hip actually did that? So then I'm thinking, okay maybe we have to sw- change your stance a little bit or your swing characteristic to help you get your club on plane, to help you do these things. So as I look at the numbers, I also go through my, my physical therapy screen to see, okay, we see a limitation in your thoracic rotation. Is it 
is it a physical thing? Is it a mobility type of restriction or is it a motor control? Do you, do you just not how to use those muscles efficiently to be able to turn you? So I take your body, kind of break it down and say, okay, you know, X, Y, and Z is just because you, you don't know how to move. No one's ever taught you how to move this way or, you know, and then A, B, and C, listen, you have some significant maybe restrictions here or, you know, when's the last time you got the club fitting? Have you ever had a club fitting? Because, you know, you could get your clubs fit and all of a sudden you're flushing the ball and we don't have to change anything physically. If you're not in pain, it's like, okay, voila, like that's all you really needed. Your clubs were too heavy or they were too long or, you know, um, so as far as like the colors go, I, I take that into consideration, but it's just a piece of the overall picture of fitting you for the swing st style that fits you best essentially. Yeah, no, that, that, yeah. that makes sense. Cause I, you know, being again, the nerd that I am, like the data and the information that's able to be shared is something that like definitely yeah. gets my mind going crazy and bonkers sure. about this and this and this and this. And this. So, you know, like, and I get it. It's not going to help lower your handicap. Like it's not going right. to help lower your scores. Like, Oh, don't go get TPI or go to Dr. Mike. And all of a sudden you're going to shoot 75. Like that's not a realistic thing. Right. But I think the end goal is that while I'm out there, I feel solid. I feel good. And then when the round's over, I don't feel possibly yeah. as sore yeah. as I am on a normal day. Are those thoughts that go in it? Because I know you can't guarantee, yeah. come to me, I'm going to lower your score. I'm going to fix Absolutely. your swing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, are those the thoughts that go through your mind? A hundred percent. My my goal is how do you feel physically before, during, and after a round? Like I said, you, your body is what fuels your swing. So, you know, if you're hindered or limited by your body, like, that's no fun. You know, pushing through back pain during a round or that nagging shoulder injury through a round. So if I can get you to, you know, you were able to get through six holes before that shoulder pain started, and now you can get through 15 holes before that that shoulder pain starts it that's a huge win for me right you just played eight more holes whatever it is without pain so those are my goals from a physical perspective can you um play without pain that's my physical therapy like goal and then my other goal is okay well if we can create some more speed some more power in your swing then then why not you know yeah. who wants you know who who'd say no to a couple extra yards here or there you know or or feel that that sense of like that just felt so pure you know you know when your swings off a little bit or like oh that didn't feel right like just getting you one with your body and knowing what that perfect swing feels like for you yeah no and i think that's important the way you ended that for yeah. you because we're all different in so many aspects is like for what feels good to me may not to you may not to ryan and i right. think that's that that is a very important thing I mean, right. You went through this process. I mean, four months is no joke. I mean, that's a time commitment. And I think when you have now finished this process, like physically, how do you feel? I mean, you know where you were when you started. You know where you are today. Do you feel better? Can you actually say and look at us and say, listen, I feel a difference. I do. I'm able to do this. Or can you give me an example of what like you couldn't do that now you can <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't if, know if I like that. I no, no, no. I like oh, I hundred percent, a hundred percent feel better. I, I really do. I, I was gonna, I was gonna answer the second part first. Uh, I a hundred percent feel better. There's definitely times where, like, um, as as Mike had said, like my right hip, my left calf, um, start things start to act up. Um, but knowing where they were compared to where they are now on just a baseline. It, just like just living my life they're they're better than where they were and then when top on top of that when you add to to mike's point like i might be playing golf and like my my calf might start acting up on hole 15 as opposed to hole eight before um so like there's there's those kinds of things that um you know that have been in, improved for sure uh have I seen improvements? I, I've can I feel can like, I, can I interject real quick? Yeah. yeah I can't wait to okay. hear this one. Give it to so, him, baby. So it's the double edged sword sometimes, right? Because as far as practice goes, a lot of times my clients don't have enough time during the week to really 
practice or get to the range enough to so what happens when they go to the course sometimes it's like okay my seven iron used to go 150 and then i went and maybe i i hit it over the green i hit it 160 because i hit it pure so it's actually getting to know maybe your yardages or your your you know how the club feels because you might i don't want to say swinging different but you sort of are at the same time so I don't know, Ryan, if you want to kind of... Uh, I was it. actually going to say the exact same thing. Like my yeah. my body mechanics have not caught up with my practice time. Yeah. And I need to, I need to, honestly, I, I need to spend time on a range. I need to spend time, you know, it's, it's going to take some rounds to to hone in or, or kind of like figure out the new body mechanics. Because some there's been some times, because I have been playing, there's been times where like I'll, I'll, I'll work on or like I'll consciously think about like, again... It, a thing that Dr. Mike and I talked about, like jumping my left hip backwards, something that resonated with me. And for me, that isn't always the case because sometimes the old swing will sneak in. So it's more the getting it consistent, but I can definitely feel when I do it. And I'm like, Oh, that was so damn good. Uh, there's, there's been a couple where I, that I've hit that I was like, Oh man, that's what, that that's what this is supposed to feel like. And that's the new, like the new swing is supposed to feel like, um, and Mike, as you said, like not, not even working on the swing, working on my body for my swing. Uh, but, but that's the, that's the feeling and you got to get to the range. You got to practice it. You got to get the understanding of this new part. And that's the, so seeing any results. Yes. Seeing consistent results. No, because again, you, you got to work it out at the range and, and you got to actually play with it, you know? Now, listen, I, I, I get it. I like it. It, it definitely has interest me in, in, in watching. I guess my last question is when you guys get back together, mm -hmm. okay, and you've, you've kind of gone through maybe the golf season or, you know, whatever the case is, what are some hopes and some, I guess, goals that like, all right, I go back to Dr. Mike and maybe my left calf to your right, to your point, right. Feels good. Or discounting numbers, because I know like we can be driven in a results driven yeah. world. Like that, all the result is all that matters. Like what are some things that like maybe Rye you're hoping for from April through J November of the posting season that you maybe just simply feel better. And then Dr. Mike from like, from the doctor perspective, what are you hoping that Ryan gets out of this posting season? Yeah. So for me, Again, it's physicality. Can can he play all season and feel relatively good? You know, where we're not creating damage to the body. Soreness is a natural part of the game. You know, we discuss certain sorenesses, certain feelings. This is okay if you feel it. This is we we want to maybe readdress something. You're feeling this, um, and then if really you remember back to Ireland last year, Mike, yeah. I, I hurt my calf. I had to go see doctor. So like to that point, you know. I, avoiding that would be great yeah yeah and uh you know ryan and i or my client and i will come up with their goals so my goal is their goal you know if they want to do x y and z great how can i do my best job to get you to x y and z yeah and i think that makes sense too because you can only go as far as the client wants to go right. and, if, and if you see more potential you can maybe nudge them yeah but like to my earlier points, it's it's if the client doesn't want to do the work, that's not going to get better, even if yeah. you're trying to get them to that point. Right. right what do you got, buddy? Uh, I, I obviously, you know, people know I'm my golf scores, right? I'm dying to hear this answer because <laughs> I, I just want to know because of all people, you know, I'll hold your ass accountable. I know. This, I know. And I'll be texting you at 415 <laughs> rather than 615 if I need to. <laughs> I... I really would like to break 80 this summer. I, that's a, that's a goal. I've, I've done it only five times in my life. Um, I, I feel like I'm in a place we've put in the work now with the body mechanics, the body motion now putting it into, into play with my golf swing and making it work. But I, I think I can get to a point there. And that that's kind of a goal of mine is to bring the, to break 80. That's like a number. Uh, I'd like to bring the handicap down. I'd like to get into single digits not just visit single digits the, yeah. the one time I did. Um, so those are, those are two I, I, like number tangible goals um, that I'd like to see. But then also to, to Mike's point, uh, to Dr. Mike's point, 
I'd like to feel good while I'm out there. I'd like to be able to walk the course and not have my calf hurt. I'd like to, I'd like to be able to, after a round, uh, you know, not have to worry about like, Oh, my right hip is super stiff now or, or that kind of stuff. So it's those kind of things that are also, uh, also driving me. Listen, I, I think it's great stuff. I do. I, I mean, I, I, I can't believe Dr. Mike was, like me willing to spend that much time with you for, for such a long period of time. Uh, it was man, all you know, good. Yeah, it man, all man, good. it's all good. And the karate kick was well worth it. So listen, I listen, Dr. Mike, if not you, you can bet your bottom dollar that my rear end will hold that guy's rear end to That's doing it. the right thing. I appreciate that. We need all, all the community support that we can. <laughs> all right. It takes a village, right? Instagram and socials and, you know, get them going. Yeah, listen, all those comments that get fired and I send them his way. He's like, don't yeah. send me them. Don't. I'll be sending them to you. <laughs> yeah, I great. hope you're doing those stretches. But listen, Dr. Mike, I can't thank you enough for coming on today's show. I mean, I think the journey and the process that you and Ryan have gone on is something that needed to be highlighted. And to get you on to kind of show us and tell us and teach us really more about what the TPI process is and how you go about handling things with your clients are, are truly second to none. So why don't you throw one more little thing in there where people can find you um, if they don't already? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm located in Middletown, New Jersey, um, over at Core Fitness on uh, Canes Lane. Uh, you can find me at Sports Solutions PT on Instagram. Uh, my email is there too, it can, um, or M Pomichella, that's M P O M Y K A L A P T at gmail.com. Shoot me an email. Love to chat with you. Um, thanks for having me guys. It's been a pleasure. Right. Yeah, pressure's man. on buddy. <laughs> That's it. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get out there this summer so we can, uh, you know, throw some bets down on Rye. <laughs> oh, I am all in on that. Aspect of things. Don't worry about that. That's but great. listen, nonetheless, thank you so much for coming on today's show, man. I really do appreciate it. Been a pleasure guys. Have a good weekend. Thanks Mike. Appreciate you. You too. Gotcha. Dr. Mike Pamacala at Sports Solutions Physical Therapy and Performance Development is located in Middletown, New Jersey. A Titleist Performance Institute medical practitioner, Dr. Mike uses a hands-on approach with his clients to get them out of pain and back onto the golf course. No pain, no problem. Assessments are available for golfers looking to improve flexibility, power, strength, stability, and overall efficiency with their golf swing. Don't let dysfunction disrupt your swing. Schedule an evaluation with a TPI physical therapist and check out Dr. Mike at sportssolutionspt.com and on Instagram at sportssolutionspt.